We're at the American Palm Oil Council Exhibit Booth at Natural Products Expo 2011. I'm here with Raja Ananda from Hornbill Foods, who's teamed up with Western Pacific Oils. It's good to see you again, Raja. Great to see you again at the show. Yeah, it's right. a really, really nice show. Uh, yesterday was really busy, wasn't it? Yes, yesterday was, was really crowded, and uh, today is not not so bad. It, and, uh, you know, we are picking up. I see, I see more people here, and uh, a lot of people have come by the booth for more information on Palm and looking for someone who can distribute the Palm to them, so that's great for me. Good for you. Well, let's uh, begin here by talking about what your role is in developing the palm oil market in California. Uh, Hornbill Foods started about... Uh, in you know in early 2005 and uh, I worked with the Malaysian Palm Oil Council uh, together with them did all the shows and we introduced Palm to all these people and uh, we picked up a lot of accounts in the show and uh, we've been ever since that we've been supplying to a lot of uh, you know cookie manufacturers uh, to tortilla manufacturers and a lot of other food companies so that's great you know well, that's good, especially here in the California market with the uh, with the Latin market. And we'll get into that a little later here, but okay. that's a that's a really good thing for you. Yes, yes, yes. The Hispanic market has grown uh, tremendously, and with the passage of the uh, the transfer bill, which became effective as of January one this year, mm -hmm. a lot of Hispanic markets have changed, and uh, most of them use my palm shortening to make all the tortillas. Uh, some also use that to make all the baked goods, and uh, also. A lot of uh, food items come out of Mexico to the the Hispanic market here, and they had to change uh, whatever they are using to a transfer-free product. And in the last couple of months, we have started to sell also to Mexico because they had to use the palm shortening to get away from the products that had transfer free in it. So that has opened up doors for us as well. That's really great because I know that they use a lot of uh, uh, more of the of the deep fat lard type products and are having to switch over then. Yes. Yes, uh, uh, they were also using a lot of soy shortening uh, back in Mexico and because of the passage of the law and a lot of supermarkets, the Hispanic supermarkets in California told them, hey, we have to change. So a lot of them do use lard, but well, most of them have changed to palm shortening. So that's, that's been really beneficial for yes, you then. Yes, that's, that's been very good for us especially, yes. All right, that's <laughs> really great. Well. You specialize uh, in the middle-sized food market and companies here in California. Tell us what the middle-sized market is and how it is different from the bigger companies. Yeah. Um, you know, small business makes bulk of the business in America, and especially in California, there's a lot yeah. of mom and pop, uh, whether it's bakeries, uh, uh, you know, bread companies, tortilla companies. Uh, especially California, has a lot of tortilla companies. Oh, yeah. and, and we have managed to convince them to use the palm shortening which is a transfer free product and also by using the palm shortening um, that has given them a few extra days of shelf life because uh, you know there's no return and also you know and the longer shelf life has actually helped them save a lot of money on the bottom line yeah, yeah. and uh, I remember when I was uh, living up north before I moved down here there was a big company up there called Ozuna which uh, which was big up in San Jose and stuff like it. We used to get our tortillas from over there. Yes, actually, Ozuna is one of my clients, and I've been selling to them for the last, uh, and Mr. Vito is the owner. I'm running very well, and I've been selling to him for the last two years, and his tortillas, up in, if you go up to Northern California to all the restaurant depot, he supplies them, so he uses my product. So he uses your product. Yes, wow, it's a small have. world here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are the ch some of the challenges in that uh, the, the mid-sized market faces, and what are some of the future plans for this market? You know, the biggest problem right now is are the high high commodity prices, uh -huh. and uh, and this this is a big, uh, how shall I say, uh, it affects a lot of so-called the mid and small size food manufacturers, uh, whether it's wheat, whether it's uh, sugar, whether it's the palm, mm -hmm. soy, it is it has uh, deeply affected them, and the thing is that nobody wants to pass on the prices to the consumers. Yeah, so. Including us and them, what we have done is we, we try to uh, 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 keep up the prices low enough so that they can, you know, uh, they can sell to supermarkets and in turn not pass on any price increases. But uh, that's been pretty tough. But hopefully the prices starts to come down and you know things get back to a bit normal. You know? Right. Yeah. Thing, especially things in the world right now are a little uh, a little crazy, and especially the Middle East with the oil prices. And is that has been, that been affecting you too? Yeah, that is affecting me because uh, uh, recently we have opened up uh, warehouses in New York and uh, uh, Houston, Texas, 
in the next 30 days we'll have a warehouse in Chicago and we also opened up one in Frisco mm -hmm. and we also and our our headquarters is in LA and we've been using we've been trucking all of our our stuff to all these places earlier and sometimes we do ship to places like Utah you know or to Seattle and we had you know and the cost of freight has gone up at $100 a barrel some you know we have to pass on the cost so that has also affected us quite a bit in terms of our margins but we still try to maintain uh, the price level which the customer needs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is the demand for palm oil in this uh, mid-market growing, and where do you see it a few years down the road? Uh, Ray, you know, uh, four or five years ago, um, I, I assume U.S. probably imported maybe uh, four to 500,000 uh, tons. Uh, I just checked with, uh, with MPOB, and we imported almost... Uh, close to a million tons of palm oil last year, and not including the package, whether it's shortening margarine, the palm kernel oil, maybe close to 600,000 tons. So the market has grown fourfold in the last four or five years. And we, with how, you know, with, with the passage of the trans fat free law, especially in California, where we have a lot of food companies, whether it's bakery, whether it's tortilla companies and whatnot. Uh, you know, looks like the uh, two million mark is not that far off. <laughs> wow, that, that must be exciting for you. Yeah, definitely. You know, we see our we see our sales growing, um, and the uh, the Golden Palm brand has, has kind of taken up by itself. You know, uh, we launched that brand about four years ago. It, it took a while to grow the brand, but uh, people don't ask for Hornbill. You know, people ask for the Golden Palm brand. Yeah. And, uh, we sell to big distribution companies, Bake, Mark, Dawn Foods. You can go to all the cash and carries in Restaurant Depot. They carry it. And thanks to the loyal customers who ask for that brand. And you're in the right market. You're in the right place here in, in Southern California and in California as well because it's a big uh, Hispanic Latin market here yes. that uh, demands these types of products. And speaking about Mexico, you, have a, um, you started uh, exporting over there or doing business with them. How is that going? Tell us, tell us what that's all about. Uh, we actually started selling to Mexico last year, and then when the U.S. currency took a dive, we didn't do as much. But as of December, because of the transfer free laws in California, a lot of, whether it's cookies or uh, all kind of food items that come out of Mexico to California, uh, uh, they were kind of forced to change. So uh, that has helped us tremendously. And in the last two, three months, uh, we have seen our... Uh, uh, of a shipments to Mexico has grown fourfold, so mm -hmm. that's good. And uh, we might go to Mexico and do one of the shows in Guadalajara, and that will also open up uh, more business for us. And it's much easier to ship out of California to yeah. Mexico by trucks. Yeah, and and it's so you know Mexico is so close here to us, so it's uh, you have a really interesting and, and peculiar relationship with them because it is so close that there must be. Uh, uh, a, a tremendous amount of opportunity down there that uh, in the in the in the future. Yeah, I mean, uh, Mexico do uh, um, import some palm oil, uh, but like I, uh, but I do see a big growth in Mexico uh, mm. uh, with all the food imports coming to the U.S. So uh, yeah, I mean, we are we are excited that hopefully uh, we can start to sell more to Mexico. We are now working with two distributors. We just have to find more distribution outlets so that uh, the people can can get the product and do whatever they need to ship it back to U.S. Right. <laughs> okay, I want to talk to you about Western Pacific Oils. Uh, yes. What is Western Pacific Oils? Well, Western Pacific Oils was formed uh, late last year, and uh, we teamed up with another manufacturer in Malaysia, Moy Foods, and uh, we were getting a lot of calls all over U.S. for our products uh, and also working with our present or our present current distributors, uh, they wanted us to warehouse it, whether it was in New York or New Jersey or Texas. So we opened up all the satellite warehouses so that you know we can ship uh, our brand Golden Pump to all these places. So I teamed up the Western Pacific. Uh, we we formed a joint venture with one of the manufacturers in Malaysia, uh, and now we have. Uh, you know, of course, we need more more product resources to do this, and also people resources. So we teamed up with them, and now we are almost, uh, once we open up Chicago end of the, uh, end of the month, early next month, uh, we will have a solid distribution in the U.S. That's great. Chicago, uh, I can envision you making uh, pizzas with palm oil. <laughs> <laughs> 
Actually, we uh, the show this this show yesterday we had a client uh, who was looking for palm flakes for the pizza. So uh, that is something which we don't do, but we're going to be working with the manufacturer who can convert palm oil to palm flakes. It's it's out there, but we don't do it. But it's just that it's not easy to get this product into the hands of food manufacturers. So the only way is, is by opening up more food distribution outlets, and that will uh, you know allow us to expand our product and and have people use our product. Tell us about distribution then, because you, you mentioned that word before. Uh, tell our viewers exactly what is distribution. How does it work? Uh, U.S. is a big country. <laughs> it's not easy trucking something from California all the way up to uh, New York and New Jersey. You know, that, that trucking itself will run you about $5,000. So um, by having satellite warehouses or, you know, in some of the major cities, uh, that will help us grow the business. And the biggest thing is, instead of trucking it down from, say, Los Angeles to New Jersey, by shipping it directly to New Jersey, we will save a lot of money. And, and also, when the product gets to the customer, it's a lot cheaper than what they're going to be paying. With Now, with all the high prices, we are able to save a lot of money. So the, the bottom line is having distribution centers and having the product as close as possible to the customer so that you can get a better price. I see. So you have your satellite distribution centers uh, everywhere strategically put in this country yes. then? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, are there any last thoughts or any things that you want to share with our viewers about uh, palm oil, about uh, the Latin market here, uh, about maybe future plans of what you have for Western Pacific oils, Hornbill Foods in this market? Uh, Western Pacific Oils has teamed up with Moy Foods, and Moy Foods has a lot of new products, uh, especially like our cocoa butter substitute with the high cocoa prices. Uh, we have a lot of interest, a lot of in inquiries yesterday at the show and also today looking for this product. And uh, especially Chicago is a huge so-called confectionery market, and uh, we are able to offer something which is quite compatible to cocoa butter. That's one. And uh, Western Pacific, you know, we are... We are trying to uh, try to uh, get the product to more more of the customers, and the only way is by having satellite warehouses. And this way, all of our so-called food distributors can come to the warehouse, pick up the product, and be able to deliver to the customers at a much cheaper price. And mm -hmm. and always the bottom line is price. Uh, with all the high food costs these days, yeah. everything makes makes a big difference. Uh, and trying to be able to sell a product to a customer in a supermarket where they can afford the product, whether it's bread or a cookie or a muffin. So uh, our goal is to, uh, uh, is to work with the parent company, which is Moy Foods and Syme Darby, uh, to, uh, to get products which a customer needs. And um, right now, one of the hottest products is blended oils, which is a, blend, which is a palm base, palm canola blend margarine, uh, palm canola blend shortening. Uh, that's what we are, we are launching in the show this, uh, for these three days. So we can we can offer a pure palm product and a blended palm palm canola product because uh, palm is high in sad fats, nothing wrong with that, but we want to be able to offer whatever the customer needs. That's what we have, you know. So we have a, a range of blended products. Sounds like you have a uh, a lot going on here, not only uh, at the show but with uh, your companies in Western Pacific Oils, Hornbill Foods. And uh, it looks like you really have a great future here because of the uh, explosion of people knowing about palm oil, about its uh, health benefits, about the changes in laws here in California, and about the, uh, the Latin American, uh, the Mexican market here, and, and the, uh, the uh, Latin market here in California. So looks like you're going in the right direction. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we, uh, we have also opened up uh, uh, an office um, up in Canada because we also got a lot of interest from Canada, so we can ship it out. Uh, from California. Uh, so we do see the palm growing in America uh, uh, and that will uh, enhance our business and also the company's business. And we see uh, the growth of palm uh, in the next two, three years. Uh, okay. That'll be good for all of us. It's a good product and a lot of people have accepted palm. Uh, working with the American Palm Oil Council doing shows etiquette people on the palm and a, a lot of people have accepted palm in their food products so that's good for all of us 
Well, it's been good uh, speaking with you here at the uh, Natural Products Expo, Roger. Much continued success. This is Ray Ibarra from the American Palm Oil Council Exhibitor Booth at the Natural Products Expo 2011. Thank you. Thank you.